Greetings and welcome to Calabash Community Talk with me, Ramazay Jonas, and this is a platform for small businesses to ask more about the uh, services that what are do what are they doing and how are they affected because some of the challenges are in the country also how are they navigating around those pro uh, challenges if, if you want to be part of this as a small business you send us an email at podcast at at calabash media network that's here podcast at calabash media network that's here that's a your quarter or send up on 0815813936 0815813936 today rewale us mel clapi rewa ka soweto travel shop what is it i saying i know her from long a long time ago from my life today welcome to a uh, calabash community Thank you. Thank you for having me, Jonathan. How are you? I think where we can start is what is so. Well, um, so it's a travel shop is basically exactly that. It is a travel shop that is based in Soweto. We sell travel products. Um, we do tours. We do customized packages. We do basically everything that is related to the travel and hospitality industry. We don't have a shop as yet, but you can shop online and we basically do everything for you. We source um, deals for you. We negotiate prices for you. We facilitate your trips and tours for you. And we monitor you while you are on the road. And eventually when you come back, you just did not have anything else to do except enjoying travel. That's what the travel. travel shop is. is. <laughs> Let's start the link. When did this business start? And you are allowed for traveling. Let's start the link when I was <laughs> All right. Um, I think your network is is slightly bad because um, <laughs> I'm struggling to hear you. When when did you start with we we? Oh, it's okay, so um, I started the whole company in 2012, and when it started, it was actually named after myself, which is it used to be Mel Prods South Africa. What that meant was basic Mel is sweet, it's honey, in Portuguese. And then prods just basically mean that push over the edge, you know? So um, when it started in 2012, it was my sweet influence into South Africans traveling. And um, as time went on, I had to change the name, which was then in 2014, where I changed the name to Soweto Travel Shop to make it more relevant because unless if you knew what Mal Prods SA did, then you really wouldn't know and associate it with the travel industry. So I had to come up with something that resonated with myself, something that was more homely and something that was more receptive to the industry. And what better way than to be associated with my hometown, which is Soweto. And what did I do? I do travel. So the easiest thing was basically to name it Soweto Travel Shop. But otherwise, 2012 is when we started. And we've been in the in the game now for a good eight to nine years now. <laughs> what, 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 what inspires the what inspired the, the love for traveling? Wow. Okay. Well, um, you know, it's a very funny story actually. What what hap- it's actually more about what happened that made me fall in love with traveling, right? Um, so I went through a very tough time in, in, in my life at some time, right? And I had chronic, I was just diagnosed with chronic depression. And, um, strange enough, someone said to me, there's something called the Durban July that happens every year. And how about you come with and you come and you enjoy. So I said, absolutely no problem. I paid up for my travel package. And at the last minute, the, this girl decides, uh, no, um, not enough people actually bought into the tours. So I've had, I have to cancel. 
that time I've booked my accommodation, I've bought my tickets, I have my outfits and everything. And I really wanted to go because I'd never been to Durban at that point in time. So um, I remember I got to Park Station and I kept like Park Station. I I I booked a car and I was like, "Bona, give us a colony." Now get some more, get there, because I I just wanted to get out of the state of mind that I was in. And I got to I got to Durban, and when I got to Durban, I realized, "Wow, you know what? Like, how can hold that from Durban? I was refreshed. I was like." You know, um, life I want to take on the world. I saw the scenery and driving down to Durban, it was at night. So I didn't see anything, but driving back and I was looking at the scenery. There's a point where I had the volume off and I was just taking in everything. And it's amazing what it did for me. So for me, it, it wasn't really much of an inspiration that made me go into travel, but it is what happened in my life. that made me want to travel and when i realized what it did for me i also realized that if i went through this and this is how i got through it mm. i'm sure other people are going through the same thing and realistically they were and people just started following what i was doing and at the end of the day i ended up being the organizer <laughs> of the tours so what, yeah that's what, how what, i got one of the, the most most difficult thing for any <laughs> business person to do is to get the first land how did you get your first land in this tourism uh, sector um you know in 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 the tourism industry especially if you're a travel agent or if you are a tour operator net majority of the time you mm. don't have anything tangible and when i mean mm. tangible i mean assets okay la bona ne and even when you write your business proposal it is very hard for you to say kenali keto reka koloi keto reka property keto reka so it is honestly very very difficult and i also realized for a even when you do the incubators that the you know every business um incubator that we do it is very difficult for them to understand the the platform that we play in or the industry that we play in so support honestly when it comes to the industry i think i'm not going to lie to you unless if or owner bnb which is property unless if or owner transport which you own vehicles unless if Mm-mm. i don't know like unless if you have a tangible commodity to offer the person would love to invest in but um how i got out of it was purely simple i didn't have to own any of these things you know i just had to associate and network with the people that actually owned all of these things and when i put all of these things together i then have a mm. non tangible product that I then sell off. So I became a very critical link between but bane babatla di bane babatla oreka like um the holiday homes, people that wanted to go on holidays but didn't know where the accommodation was or what's the ideal accommodation. I became the integral link for people that wanted transport but transport was too expensive. So I just played that middleman role between yourselves and Libo Sun International, Body BNBs, Body um, Bus Services, Body Airlines, and that's the role that that's the mm. that's the bridge, that's the gap that I actually bridged. So I became best, I, I became a necessity, and mm-hmm. that's how I made money. And honestly, nobody funded me. No. You, I just you, made. I you, just you, made you, money. You took nobody the, funded the, the, um, me. And you fought no, for your business the way it is. So as people in the townships do That's we travel did. or we just see it as activity village people or I give it so the white privileged people do we like traveling in townships Um If I understand you yes, correctly, you're asking me, Jorge, who travels more? 
Am I right? Um, honestly, our people, uh, Oiti, mm. there's a saying where they say you cannot teach an old dog new tricks. I don't know if you know that trick. I mean, that saying. But um, our people, when I say our people, I mean people based in the township. I mean, us black people, the so-called disadvantaged people. We've never really been exposed mm. to the luxury of travel and taking mm. a break away from the hustle and bustle of every day. So, mm. and we decide, no, you know what, my break is going home to go see family. Mm. Because we think, Jorge, when you live in Joburg, you're actually away from home. So, mm. traveling for the normal black person was never about luxury. Traveling for the normal black person was always about, I'm away from home for such a long time, and I'm working and I'm sweating mm. on a daily basis, that after Easter, I'm on the road and I go home. That used to be travel for Rona Batuabanzo. But of recent, um, that's the old generation, and it's very hard to. I, I've seen I've seen um, South African tourism trying to, what? How do I put it? They're trying to motivate the older generation, your generations, mm. to travel. But it's very hard because travel for Bonaki Khabayakai, you know. But um, of recent, I look at generation ger- generation Z and generation X. Now these people are fourth industrialists at, at their best. They enjoy travel. They are more of explorers. They really want to go out there and see and not just travel because uh, they, they were born in the hustle and bustle. So their homes are in the hustle and bustle and once in a while they really want to get out of the hustle and bustle and actually go rest and rejuvenate and come back even more energetic so that they can talk on they can take on life so in in essence you could say Jorge, yeah in the township there are people that travel uh, there are people that are getting in touch with the norms of actually traveling for leisure not only to go mm-hmm. home but uh mostly baba banyani generation they are the ones by long haul they are more explorative they want to explore they want mm-hmm. to see the world and they travel for various reasons. So um, we're getting there. We're definitely getting there. We're definitely getting there, especially with technology available <laughs> and social media yeah. platforms available. We're seeing a lot of pictures, Babamba Photoshop, but anyway, how not that? But um, yeah, with social media being okay, available, I'm gonna come to your are starting bro. to see that you can actually right. just leave your uh, house. But now, just how you, during COVID, how did you navigate the challenges that were brought in by COVID as the tourism industry, more especially Luna as the Soweto Travel Shop. <laughs> okay. Yo, wait in like COVID-19 you know, uh, COVID-19 became a hazardous problem to the industry, but what, what I do know is that, uh, you know, when COVID-19 started, now I had already taken a break from the industry when COVID-19 started. Um, if you would remember, uh, I had my, my, my youngest daughter. I had her sometime in 2017. And immediately after her in 2020, I then had my son. So um, for those that really know who mm. Mel is, I'm a very hands-on person like how am i lin now you guys know from from your previous from your previous employment you know i was very hands-on and um it it posed a huge challenge for me to travel with my with my kids because they were so i had to slow down at some point you know so when COVID 19 happened already mel had slowed down you know um, I wasn't focusing a lot on business. I wasn't focusing a lot on making mm-hmm. money. Mara. I was just focusing a lot on the, the, the perks of being a woman, which is motherhood, you know? 
So um, in grade level, it's particularly relaxed. Mm. But what mm-hmm. it did do, in towards at a point where I was ready to make a return into the business, you know, into the industry, and little little did I know, Jorge, it would serve as a blessing for me. I, I really don't think that COVID-19 was that much of a detriment to mm-hmm. a lot of businesses, unless if you did not know the reasons why you were in business in the first place. Um, with me, what it did is it made me sit back and watch mm. the downfalls of other small businesses and watch why they were actually falling down. For well, understand. Not to say that I was watching them go down, but why are they going down? Why did they go down because of COVID-19? Mm. And what I realized is that there was, you know, mm-hmm. when you plan a business, you need to have business continuity management. That's the reason why you see the corporates the whole Santandiemi. Because banali on a business continuity management, banali the insurance, banali in Chutanga, that's a long or bats a hor of Shurka Sani, building Yabona, it's okay in Chile. They would still be able to make a comeback. It might not be in the same premises, but in a different one, but they will still be able to make a, um, a mm. comeback. So, what COVID 19 then did for me, it made me go back, it gave me a full year to just i wasn't competing with anyone i wasn't under pressure to produce any tours i was not under any pressure mm. to, to to make business because there was no business so it gave me time to reflect for it where was my business what was it doing was it still servicing the purpose that i initially started with was i still as authentic as i was when i started in the business Am I still able to provide a hands-on service mm. like I used to before? Now, mind you, I'm not the young, happy, chappy that, you know, that I was when I entered into the industry. So yeah. I had to do a lot of introspect with the business model itself, the business operation itself, and you know, and safe to say, Hore, mm-hmm. when I eventually came back into the industry, the, the, the characteristics of a crocodile it, it just lays down and and looks at everybody and it pounces up and that's what happened i'm back now in the industry and i'm doing great things and people don't even know where i was hiding all along so COVID 19 may have been a detriment to a lot of businesses, but honestly, I think it should have given us enough to raise to and fix our bring back those businesses. So, Wanga didn't initiate the tourism in the tourism sector. Has we has the government? Sorry, um, I think I lost you there. Has the government? Has the government done enough to rescue the business or bring back those say during I, the period I think yeah, I lost yeah, you yeah, for a yeah, 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 COVID. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a tough one. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, the government has uh-huh. really done. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm a mom, right? And I have um, mm. the little chappy weppy here. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that's the perks of being a mompreneur. But, um, you know, to be honest, to be honest with you, the government has done all they can. And I'm not saying mm-hmm. enough, mm-hmm. but I'm saying that they have done all that they can do mm-hmm. for small business, right? However, their priorities were not in the right place from the beginning. Like I said, Jorge, you know, I went through a lot of incubators before mm-hmm. COVID-19. Mm-hmm. I went through a lot of incubators and the incubators themselves did not understand the crux of my business my industry they understood that the hospitality Mm -hmm. industry you have to have a property or transportation but they didn't understand that in hospitality you also provide a service Mm -hmm. which is in most cases 
very hard to invest in especially or we are going to go about the loan for investment right it's not very easy because how na sip is a tangible say long for it they can mm. actually take back if you mm. don't pay them so um during covid 19 honestly they made money mm-hmm. available that's all they did but it was too late for them to actually salvage what was already going wrong the the the, the program mm-hmm. zabona they are not equipped with the right business sustainability programs and topics that is why we saw a lot of the companies mm-hmm. a lot of smmes during the covid-19 period they did not qualify for the small business funding and how do i vote that for but why but you never saw qualify there's only one statement barki red tape we think that it was red tape because we were not compliant from the onset problem is um when we were doing the pro the programs or the incubators that the government has had for many years the problem mm-hmm. was that we were never taught about compliance mm-hmm. we were only taught about the commercialization of what we think we had akona motho dutseng le rona mofatse a re rota di financials nobody sat down with us and taught us the importance of having insurance nobody taught us the importance of having business continuity managed plan nobody taught us to not be mm-hmm. a one woman show gore ha mel a ka rikiti perfect example hanka shwa ka sa nu saying who's going to manage mel project say because i'm a one woman show i'm deemed to be an entrepreneur you know what i mean a female entrepreneur but am i building a big enough organization that will carry on for generations to mm-hmm. come you know so the model the support model yeah government was already not working before covid-19 and when covid-19 came it just showed the cracks mm. in the wall that they were trying to build yes they made money available but nobody could qualify for it because they were not compliant for you to for you for you to qualify for that funding you had to present the documents that you would normally present when mm-hmm. you are looking for How a loan at a bank differently? and if majority we wake 80% up and then of the companies we that have the dif- a new what pandemic did we expect How to should happen? we do things differently <laughs> How should we do things differently in the uh, tourism sector let's say tomorrow we wake up and there's a new pandemic sorry han um bigger what pardon? is it that we learning what we learned from covid and how are we going to do things differently okay well um mm. you know in the tourism industry i think they call me the dark horse um, a lot of the times because i'm a realist nike one need and i get have one need khale ke bua ke re mo go bone you know take us a perfect example sheba ko vilagas street how many bnbs mm. are in vilagas street and around vilagas street and none of those ladies are making money mm. and if you look at the reasons why they're not making money mm. is because they are gatekeepers in the tourism industry Mm-hmm. The gatekeepers in the tourism industry are your big corporates. Your 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 tour houses, the mm-hmm. whole, you know? And Batlisa di base, how many buses come into mm-hmm. Vilagazi street mm-hmm. before COVID-19? Nerbona base they more than 100 or more than mm-hmm. 200 in a day full mm-hmm. of people, ne? But no B&B was ever sold out in Vilagazi street. And I mm-hmm. said to them you cannot be a one woman show and ulolwantsa a tourist uli one and think that you're going to get a bus full of people who are going to book inside your property mm-hmm. it doesn't make any sense you cannot compete as an individual however mm-hmm. if you come together lele bo meba ba le ko vilagazi and i'm just making an example ka 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 bo meba ko vilagazi but there are many other entities that make up the tourism industry right but hardly if mm-hmm. you guys were to come together and form a consortium and say we as the women of vilagazi street 
we are tired of being in uh, in silos we are tired of mm. being a bnb one eight two eight three no but we are coming together to form a consortium and we want land in that mm. land we want to build a hotel that will be just as competitive as your sentin convention centers where if a bus or three or two mm -hmm. come into soweto that entire tour will be accommodated mm. in that property really 50 jonathan we all go out really 50 mm. promoting one property and every 50 each and every one of us out of the 50 brings back mm. 10 clients on a daily basis 365 days a year we would be sold out mm -hmm. but unfortunately that is not what our government is preaching our government is preaching entrepreneurship mm -hmm. how many of us own our own companies and we are all going down the train but if you were to take 50 of those people mm. who have the same service, who have the mm. same vision, who have multiple skills, there's nothing stopping them from, from mm. heading up the, what do you, the housekeeping department of a hotel. Mm. There is people such as myself who talk a lot. There's nothing wrong with me heading up the marketing and PR team of a hotel there's women out there that have bookkeeping skills there's nothing stopping that person from doing our accounting and pricing and we all come together and we fall we form mm. one consortium we, we 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 tend to lose it in in the basic fundamentals of business which is business capital you know capital capital comes in the form of money Mm. Capital comes in the form of equipment and capital also for comes in the form of skills. So why why is it that we cannot split a hundred percent PTY owned and split 2020, yeah. 2020, 2020 for the benefits mm -hmm. of all of us having different skills to make sure that the business succeeds? So that's what I've learned. During COVID-19, Hore, equip myself with all of these skills and open, be open to receiving people that say, I have this skill. Can I partner? Now I'm willing to sell off 10% of, mm. of my business. 10% of my business. Osman, let's now go to your product. Uh, uh, let's go to your product. Each, uh, That's each what I've one learned of them. for COVID. Uh, starting a uh, organization give us the, the, the product later how do we then get a hold of those services okay so um products and services that are offered by so to travel uh, travel shop are basically um so once you approach me as a client you tell me where do you want to go how do you want to get there why are you going there you know what i then do with that information i then will suggest whether the place will service the why you are going there from there i will then check up on your budget i need to work a budget there gone are the days where uh no when i'm put or unyaka we are for ingi budget and what kind of a traveler you are then my job my job which is now where my services then come from is to go and find an ideal place for you that will fulfill where why you want to go there within your price negotiating prices for you and arranging the whole tour for you so that Saha fell and you go to Upagiri back at Saha and get onto the transport. You could drop a cop go airport. From airport, you have a shuttle. From shuttle, you have accommodation. Mm -hmm. From accommodation, you have what, what then becomes your last ways as we close, you come close back the show? Yeah, Mel, thank what, you very much. I had what an are your last time. ways and how do we get in touch with you if someone wants to uh, be in touch with you? Hmm. <laughs> 
what, what is your last wish to our our people who are listening to or watching this podcast? And True. how do we I'll get I hold keep of on, you? I keep on I losing you there for a minute, eh? Okay. Well, all I can say to the people of South Africa for now, coming from an industry that was hard hit by COVID-19, first things first, guys, just go vaccinate. Vaccination, vaccination honestly does not kill. I look for Bolaya vaccination. Wait, buddy. Vaccination does not kill. You just need to make sure, Jorge, when you do go vaccinate, and you just go vaccinate, you just need to know what's wrong with you. But ultimately, let's start traveling our own country. Let's start seeing the beauty in our country. Contact us, the likes of Soweto Travel Shop and many others that are in the industry. Because without you mm-hmm. contacting us, Osmel, thank you very much for having been part of this work show. For us. Honestly, and we also can't we've feed our children and we cannot feed the nation. Matomate, thank you very much. Remember. Mm, if you remember if you want still want to be part of this uh, send an email to podcast at calabash media network that's here that's a day quota what's up on 0813 don't forget to subscribe and press that notification button so that you can still learn how to support this platform here from me ramose jonathan and all those who produce this show as well as us men thank you very much <laughs>